some moments for quick Q and A. If if there's any questions, usually the Finnish audience there's no questions, but yeah. But that's why it's, it's not from Finnish. So that's cool. <laughs> I'm a Finnish resident now, but okay, that's I'm cool. French. <laughs> um, so I totally agree on everything you said about like it's not about labeling things that are good or bad, yeah. success or mistake. So it's yeah. keeping it a question to open possibilities. Exactly. So what's your favorite question about 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 life in general? The more powerful question you use in your life. Uh, stunning question. Fantastic question. Uh, I'm a huge fan of questions, questioning everything. And actually, I, I, my, unfortunately, my favorite question is a stolen one. And it comes from David Ogilvy, who was a yeah. real fantastic mind. He was thinking like so much out of the box that I'm excited. And, and, and the way he was thinking out of the box was original. It was not like mm -hmm. cliche. And he said that uh, his favorite question is, how do you know? And, and it's fantastic when people were saying that it doesn't work, blah, blah, we tried this one or whatever, or all the studies, studies show like this, or people love this kind of font, or blah, 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 or whatever. And, and people are extremely confident about everything, because that's how we are. No one is uncertain. And he said that, how do you know? Well, uh, don't really know, I think. OK, so why do you say I, you, you kind of like you are confident? Actually, I'm not confident. Great, OK, let's start from there. So I think that the key thing in here is that we should be more uncertain about life. And, and when people, for example, say that, well, I've been pitching ideas all my life. And quite often people say, oh, it's a good idea. It's, it's a small idea, but a good idea. And how do you know it's a small idea? Well, we all know that it's a small idea, but I don't. Maybe it's a big one. Or said, that's a big idea. How do you know? Because no one knows. And I think that it's extremely difficult skill to postpone dividing things in big and small in advance, because that's not how the society is built. That's not how a mind is, mind is built. Interestingly, when, when you've been studying the, the skill of questioning, when people, is, people are four, uh, you, do you know what is the average amount of questions four-year-old asks a day? I know it. Four, six, and eight. Okay. <laughs> so the av average amount is 390 <laughs> questions a day. But interestingly, how it goes is that it drops almost to zero when we are 18. So when we are 20, we don't ask because we know. But the, but the point is that we don't. We just think that we do. And I think that the core of the creativity is to be open, to be curious, to question, and so on. So love, love your question. I think that if I was, I was, I'm, I'm quite fascinated about Elon Musk, who has created Tesla and, and, and everything. And he says that everything he does, everything starts with a question. And now he's developing Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a kind of like communication uh, that happens on the ground. And he said that the question that started the Hyperloop was that, you know, Concorde, the airplane. He said that what would look, what would be the Concorde that goes on ground without rails? How would it look like? And I think that it's a fascinating question because then people get excited and so on and so on. So the fastest, transpo fastest public tra transportation on earth without the rails. And then people are instantly they are excited. But this is, these are kind of like the questions we don't ask because we, we hate uncertainty. So fantastic question. Sorry, whose question was this? Uh, this was Elon Musk who created Tesla, who created SpaceX, and so on. If you wanna, if you wanna be uh, studying creativity, the Ed Cutmore's Creativity Inc, stunning. All the interviews by Elon Musk, stunning. And so, so there's kind of like people who have creative mind and all of them start with uncertainty. Innovation processes hate them, hate them totally. Most of the brainstorming hate, most of the post-it notes hate, most of the innovation techniques hate. What I like is kind of like people who have passion and open mind and, and ability to ask questions. But creativity today is something like, if your company would be an animal, is it a cat or a dog? And I think that that's <laughs> crap. And, and we should have kind of like different kind of approach towards creativity, which is sort of like being excited about life and seeing possibilities. So it's kind of like a different kind of attitude. Uh, should I use that?
Do we need a Okay. So, <laughs> thank you, Saku. That was a fascinating theory. I, <clears throat> I um, wanted to comment this and, and get yeah. your thought. This is not a criticism. Uh, it's <clears throat> you. You mentioned Elon Musk, for example. I think what is really interesting is, uh, along with your theory, what people say about him that uh, <clears throat> that he doesn't say this himself, but people say that when you talk to him. The most fascinating thing is that that uh, he he doesn't even consider the the possibility of failing when he does that. Yeah. So so there's I think there's two sides to the you shouldn't be super unaware of you know nothing works or or so that there is this confidence there's actually uh, overconfidence uh, in what one does. I, I do agree, but it's also for me what is the essence of creativity? Essence of creativity is will to improve. So, so it's kind of like improving everything. If you're an artist, you improve the way you express pain. If you're a choreographer, you you sort of like come up with new ways. So sure. it, the essence of, is improving. And, and and Elon Musk, there was an interview where, where people were asking is that how how did you develop develop uh, Tesla, the, the electric mm. car? What kind of market research did you use and so on? He said none. We had Friday meetings and we were improving details. That's the whole story. So yes, I do agree with you is that there's kind of like this overconfidence, but how it comes is to concentrate on improving stuff instead of trying to guess what is big or what is small. He's concentrating on doing stuff. No, and I true. think that that's the essence of creativity instead of endless planning, endless market research, endless guessing or whatever, let's do stuff. And, I, and another thing I hate, for example, Genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Awful quote, hate it, and so on. Because I think that I, I had a friend who said that in Finland we have too many think tanks, we don't have enough do tanks, and everyone loved this. And I hate, I hate the idea as well. Because yes, I think the country which is full of think tanks and no one is doing anything is a bad idea. But the country where everyone are doing things and no one is thinking is even worse. <laughs> so, so, so for me, the crucial thing in here is that we should combine doing and thinking. And, and how I see creativity is that you are doing stuff and you are thinking what you are doing, and then you are modifying and doing more. So for me, the essence of creativity is the creativity in execution. Creativity is doing. It's not like idea and then execution, because that's the tra traditional way. We had an idea, now it goes to the execution pipe. Mm. And that's exactly what happened with Nokia. They had the fantastic execution pipe or whatever. But, but, but I think that the brilliance today comes from improving the details endlessly. Having the feedback loop. Ex having the feedback loop yeah. and then reacting, then being open for, for audience, saying that actually people love this, let's make this. And if you're going through the uh, successful startups, let's say Instagram, or even YouTube or whatever, all of those are based on bad product that didn't work, that had one element that did work, and they threw out 90% and said that let's concentrate on this. And I think this is exactly what I'm talking about. Let's be open for the feedback, let's react based on the feedback, and let's put more emphasis on the stuff that works, and let's throw away the stuff that doesn't. But we are not extremely open, open for feedback and so on, so we, especially if it's negative. Sure, thank you. I'm convinced. Sako, I have a question. Uh, what is your uh, thinking about how do you treat the people who treated you unfairly? Like, how do you forgive them, or how, do you, how, how can you analyze the situation? Uh, it, 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 I, I, used to, I used to go mad. Saying that you know, fucking asshole, kind of like a mature, grown-up approach, and so on. But but now I'm sort of like taking all the blame myself, which means that if I if I have an idea and they don't get it, it's not their fault. It's my fault. I'm not explaining it in a way that they get excited. And then the point in here is that if you wanna, the normal way of thinking big is that you do exactly the same than others, but in a bigger scale. If you mention things like platform or biotech 
or hockey stick model or whatever, then that's think, thinking big. But most of the thinking big is thinking something other than other, something totally different. And then once you are doing like that, no one likes that. No one, we kind of like think we want to get bold ideas. No one wants to get bold ideas. No one, because they are risky. So I think that the point in here is that you have to accept the price is that if you really want to think big, then it's going to be almost impossible to sell. Because that's how the world works. And then you have to make the decision yourself. Do I want to do exactly the same than others, which is easy to sell? Or do I want to try to do something great or whatever? And then the price of that one is that it's going to be more difficult to sell, like Walt Disney. And, and, and when, I was, when, when I was managing the broadcasters, I said that if we are creating five new shows a year, I say that one of them has to be hit, because otherwise we are not an exciting production company. Three of them have to do OK, and one of them have to be a flop. Because if none of them is a flop, none of them will be a hit. Because I can come up with three star average shows for the rest of my life. Or they will put some chef in Italy and put him in Fiat 500 and some music and, and color correct the food or whatever. It's OK. But if you want to do something which is hit, something that is great, you have to kind of like take risks or whatever. And then you ha have to accept the fact is that some work and some don't. And I was quite open when I was discussing with channels. I said that this is the philosophy we do. Some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. And let's hope that the stuff we are doing for you works. <laughs> and, and some of the people took it well, some of them didn't. But, but I was asking, is that OK, or do you, wanna, do you want us to make average shows that work perfectly, but are not great, kind of like not exciting. So no, 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 let's do something big. Let's aim for doing something big. I said, but then you have to accept the fact is that it might not work. And that's fine, that's cool. Because then they have a feeling, feeling that they are doing great. But I think that the point is, let's not comp If you have a big idea and people don't want it, let's stop complaining. Because that's the way the world works. They don't want your big idea. No one wants it. Thanks. The last question. Pressure. Uh, were you a scout or a brownie? Sorry? Were you a scout or a brownie? Partiossa. No, definitely, absolutely, definitely not. Uh -huh. okay. Why? I'm just curious. I, I think. I, I think that I, I, I cannot sleep tonight because I'm thinking is that what the hell did she mean with that question or whatever? Do do I look like a boy scout and is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I was playing hockey all my life and I was the captain of the hockey team, so hockey is my my party or my scouting or whatever. But I I don't feel like a boy scout. And if you if you put, 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 putting me into the forest with a knife or whatever, I'd say that that's an experiment that doesn't work. <laughs> Don't be sure, sure. <laughs> I might. <laughs> but the uh, scouting is a place for doers and experiments. So I, I, really I, but but I, I, do, I, do, I do get the point. I think that life is a place for doers. Life is a place for experiments. So if I want to kind of like say that everything I've said uh, I think that we should take that into the life in general, which means that, for example, if you have a dream, is that one day I want to own my, my own flower shop or whatever. I want to stop this awful creative nonsense business where I'm design thinking stuff that no one needs, and I, one day I will open my flower shop or whatever. My advice would be is that try it next Saturday. Try it kind of like next month and see whether it works. Then you get the feeling is that I tried to be in a flower shop for one day and, and so on, didn't work then I try something else. So I think that we are way too much estimating will it work without testing or whatever. So I'd say that if you have an idea, test it. Find a way to test it. I think that if you want to build a nuclear st uh, factor, uh, station or new kind of mobile phone or new kind of company or whatever, I think that everything can be tested quite cheaply in a current world. And, and same with your life. If you want to live in Berlin, if you want to live in Thailand or whatever, go to Airbnb and live there for five days in an apartment and get the feeling is that do I like this or whatever. So my point is that instead of thinking about doing, I said do stuff and think about doing, how does it feel? So I would turn that upside down. And when you were saying about scouting, I said that don't limit your experimentation into the scouts sort of like they take, take that as a central approach towards everything you do in life. That would be sort of like my main thing.